It's uncompromising, addictive and often unforgiving with an adrenaline rush like no other. There is no practice, no second chances. It's the ultimate motorsport competition on gravel. It is rally and this is the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. Everybody, I'm Greg Rust. Welcome to Rally Victoria, coming to you from Gippsland. In today's show, we'll feature the classic clash when Ford and Porsche take on Toyota. Bring you the East Coast Bull Bars Four Wheel Drive National Series that's gone to the wire with Henry Knott battling Richie Dalton. And of course, we have the final round of the Armorall Power Stage. Can Brendan Reeves even up the scorecard and keep his championship chances alive? Let's find out right now. With the scores 3-1, Reeves was eager for a win at Coates Hire Rally Australia last round. And that's exactly what happened when Scott Pettis spun himself out of qualifying. <laughs> With the pressure off, Reeves grabbed the bonus five points and levelled the championship, while Tony Sullins edged out his Citroen teammate Adrian Coppen for the three bonus points. Only championship registered competitors can qualify for the Armourall Power Stage and they have just one qualifying run to get themselves into the fastest five. The showgrounds here at Lardner Park is the setting for the final round of the Armourall Power Stage. Now the results so far, Scott Petter has three heat wins in the Renault and Brendan Rees has two in the Mazda. Now Brendan is mad keen to equal Scott's score and also keep him in a chance to win the Australian Rally Championship. But the cat has been thrown among the pigeons with the return of the current Australian Rally Champion Eli Evans in the Honda. So Throttle Springs will be stretched for the final showdown of the Armourall Power Stage for 2014. So Brendo wants to even up the score in the Power Stage stakes. Yeah. Let's take a closer look at it now. The start is at the top of the complex, meaning the run to the first corner is downhill, longer and faster. Two loops of the showground arena will lead to Polaris Split at the 800 metre mark. There's a dog leg at the end of the lake through Coates Hire hairpin before cars pull up to a square left that is Can-Am corner. The final sector skirts back along the lake incorporating a kink and jump before a climb uphill to the finish. In all, a distance of 2.3 kilometres. Ross Duncan has been driving the course and is about to catch up with our Dean Herridge. Our five times Australian Rally Champion, Ross Duncan, and once again on the Armourall Power Stage, tell us what it is like out there. Dino, I feel like I should have a dog in the back. It's a bit like <laughs> driving around somebody's farm. But I tell you what, first time ever I've seen it so dry in Victoria. Yeah, we've been here very, very wet. We've been to Lardner Park before. This is a really great little special stage. It's got the lot, hasn't it? It has, and especially those gates. There's very narrow entrances and exits of those gates. And when they get down the bottom and they do a bit of circle work, because of the dust, they're going to have trouble finding where they're going. Of course, there's a couple of long straights, a couple of tricky hairpins, and of course, as I said, those narrow gates, we've seen competitors hit them before, and I'm sure they're going to hit them today. <laughs> and our championship's on the line. This is the final round. Very important for our key stakeholders, Scott Petter and, uh, of course, Brendan Reeves. Well, gee whiz, you know, this is, uh, it's down to the wire, and this stage is so important for them to do it. Uh, let's hope both of them get through it and start the rally proper. It certainly is important and saying that rusty qualifying is very important to get one pass of that and it's over to you for the highlights. Thanks Dean, the Walkinshaw Performance Renault was first on the track but not fastest after Scott Petter drove back into his own dust in the showground arena. Flat rides. There was an early dust up between Eli Evans and Petter when the current right, champion found himself right, driving right. blind thanks to the man laying claim to the title. Evans just made the cut, equal fourth with Tony Sullins in the Citroen. Adrian Coppen choked on dust in the other Citroen, but it was oversteer at the Coates higher hairpin that left him outside the fastest five. And a 2.19 wasn't enough for the Daco focus of Alan Rowe to make it through either. 
dust did bring a temporary halt to proceedings, benefiting Glenn Raymond. But the fluoro orange RX-7 could still only manage a 216. Steve McKenzie blew through the dust to secure third fastest time for the Optico Fiesta, but it was the rally school Mazda 2 in the hands of Brendan Reeves that set pole for the final. So, Eli Evans, Tony Sullins, Steve McKenzie, Scott Petter and Brendan Reeves will challenge for the bonus championship points in the Armoral Power Stage coming to you from Rally Victoria. Welcome back, everybody. We're at Lardner Park for Rally Victoria. They're sitting third in the championship, but couldn't qualify for the Armoral Power Stage. Dean Herridge is with our wild cards on the start line right now. It's Adrian Coffin and Tim Batten. Adrian, very tough conditions of qualifying, mate. Uh, very dusty for everybody. Yeah, it was really tricky. We um, were really unfortunate. We just got, you know, showered in dust by Romo and then created our own dust and stopped a couple of times and I couldn't overshot the hairpin. And uh, look, it was just one of those things that uh, was the same for everyone. And we'll rate, we've got some TV time with the uh, wild card and we'll, we'll settle it in the forest. Yeah, look, it is a classic stage as well. Your first car out now, so dust won't be an issue. It's got a lot this stage, hasn't it? Yeah, it's actually it's a really, really good stage, and it's to get used again tomorrow afternoon, so it's a fantastic special stage, a bit of everything for the, for the fans, so it should be good. And the good thing is, in those dusty conditions, you've kept the car square, because, of course, you've got to be out there for heat one this afternoon. That's, that's absolutely right. It's a very unique rally, this one, when we get to start on uh, in only a few hours' time, so we've got to make sure we bring the car home OK. Good luck, mate. Have a good run. Cheers, Dino. Three, two, one. It's a good stage, this one, that offers a bit of everything. Some tight, twisty stuff, as well as a real chance to max the car out. Over the crest and down the hill. Smooth so far from Coppen. Well, he's made a rare blue there, rare. Recovers, recovers well. Headed now for the, the Petters loop. A bit of a short cut through there, took, took the grass out and just clipped that inside corner there. Very nicely done as he sets the car up once again. This is a full 360 loop they've got to do here. Lovely stuff there from Adrian Coppin at 2 minute 25 in qualifying. But as he said prior to the start of the stage, a lot of dust to contend with. This should be a big improvement to the very narrow area. Claris uh, is our first split time. Does very nicely through there. But crest and slow five right and a turn one left. And a great addition to the championship, these Citroens. The high shot shows you Adrian Coppin and his co-driver Tim Batten unleashing that DS3. Handbrake on there, lost a bit of time. Right entry, four left. Hear the chatter as it hunts for traction into this left-hander uphill at the Can-Am split. That's our benchmark time for now, Ross. This is the fastest part of the circuit. It's a long straight with a slight kink, and the hay bale is right on the apex of the corner. He's got through. High-tech oils. Let's see what speed he's doing. 16 k's an hour for Adrian Coppin. Big jump there. They've made it a lot higher than last year. 120, narrow through right. The call it conservative so far. He's, he's by and large tried to keep it nice and tidy, hasn't he? He certainly has. He's, uh, he's looking good at the moment. His comment to Dean Herridge before he got going was, let's do the talking in the forest. So wants to get safely through this armor all power stage and does it in a two minute 11, just a fraction over. That's a massive gain compared to the time that Adrian Coppen banked in qualifying. Good effort to start the power stage. And tidy. Bit of a uh, bit of a frustrating run this morning, especially with all the, uh, the points on offer and got smacked with some dust from Ramo, but uh, look, that's rallying. It was um, a tricky little stage, but the, the real rally starts at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Bit of analysis here now with the ECB replay. <laughs> How about that? He's sort of gone to the right-hand side of the jump. He didn't go actually go over it. So second look at it from the replay. That's quite clever, isn't it? It is, isn't it? So good work by Adrian Coppen who for now finds himself in the prime spot with the Armour All Power stage as we go back to Dean Herridge. So car number one is back, our last year's champions, Eli Evan and Glenn West, mate, great to have you back, your local rally and the smiles as it all. Yeah, mate, can't wait. It's been, um, 
It's been a long time since I've done an ARC, so I'm really excited. I think we've got our tank form as Civic sorted now, so uh, it feels fast at testing. So let's see if we can put it together on this power stage. Now you just scraped in, but it was dusty. I'm, ass I'm assuming that doesn't mean the full potential's been shown just yet. Uh, no, I had to slow down a few times just to be safe. So I was pretty thankful we qualified. I thought I'd probably gone a little bit too slow on the run, but uh, we're here now, we're the first guys at it. So nice clean run, the wind's picked up, so we'll just Go flat out as usual, Dino. Mate, we're looking forward to it. Everyone's wrapped to have you back, mate. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah, fantastic to see them back in the sport they love. In a familiar car, a great combination, and they're underway. He is certainly a fast man, and this will be a fast time. He's out wide. Break for 50, turn right three narrow, stay on farm. 100. Touch the handbrake slightly, pulls it back nicely, comes up to the right hander, and now starts doing the circle work. Cuts the corner, of course. Now he's going to be quicker than Cop and I would think, so he might even have more dust problem because he'll be quicker back into his own dust. Left three, tightens two. Weston looks like he's getting dizzy, doesn't he, as they come through the, <laughs> the penis loop. But I love the sound of this car. It's on the money. Left three. Eli Evans showing no oh, dramas as he comes 50. through the Polaris split Ooh, here. Oh, yeah, 56, 7, seven. Very oh, fast. Three, Great three, work three. at the split and showing his time away from the sport has not hurt the reflexes at all. Now down to this tricky corner. Let's see how he goes with the handbrake. This is where they're going to lose time. Anyway, oh, very fast through there. Turn left three. It's got some grunt, this car. Out wide. Cuts that corner nicely. Big gain. Big gain at the Can-Am split. Look at the advantage over Adrian Coppin and Tim Batten. He is on a mission, gritting the teeth. Eli Evans. Oh! How close was that? High-tech oils. 123 k's an hour. That's a significant gain at the speed trap and get some good air there too. Big jump. Now he's got to be on the picks very, very early here. And he's set it up and nicely down through there. I tell you what, he is on fire at the moment. Left six over, finish, Titus three. Great run. It had it all, didn't it? The car sounds fantastic in full flight. Lots of attitude for hometown advantage. 2045. It's going to be hard to beat. Mighty eight seconds quicker than qualifying. <laughs> Whoa, he's very happy with that. Jump was good. Yeah, you could take it flat. Now, if I had another go, I'd, I would hold it flat. That was pretty neat. Don't know if it's the fastest, but uh, look, it was a, a tidy run. If I had one more go at it, I could reckon I can extract a little bit more, but um, that'll do for now. I think we were faster than Adrian, so that's a good start. Strike of the replay. Check this out through the Polaris pinch. Beautiful line. He is the master of uh, positioning the car. Oh, I tell you what, that? that was close. <laughs> and what about the big jump? Here we go. Lands in West Australia when he came down there. So the benchmark set, Eli Evans with a two minute 4.5. Tony Sullins equaled Evans in qualifying, but now has to go one better to bump him out. We'll find out after the break. Watching the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship and our coverage of the Armour All Power Stage. Current leader, Eli Evans, but Dean Herridge is at the start line with the next qualifier. Tony Sullins and Julia Barclay made it into the final here again, mate. Uh, exciting stage, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's really tricky. I've never been around here before, being the, the first time doing Rally Victoria, so um, it was a bit of an eye open with all the dust. Now, you had plenty of stuff going on at Rally Australia over those three days. I'm sure you're looking for a trouble-free power stage and also obviously moving on to the rally as it starts this afternoon. Yep, hope so. Completely different start. We didn't test, we didn't do anything. The car basically rolled off the trailer. This is the first time I've driven it, so come for the relaxed but go fast approach. Is that working for you so far, sitting here right now? Well, I'm, I'm happy, so it's a good thing. <laughs> as long as you and Julie are happy, mate, hopefully you have a good run. Good luck. Very good, thank you. 
wry smile from Julia. It wasn't all convinced that she thought he was taking it easy. It's the difficult thing, this isn't it, because there's great points on offer from the power stage and they all want to chase those points, but they've got to think about the rally proper starting in just a few hours' time as well. It's a really interesting scenario. And look at the eyes on now, nice and relaxed from Sullins before they took off. Different cat now. Well, you can lose the rally here, of course, Rusty. You've got to be sort of controlled, but you've got to be fast. Lost a lot of time there. He has improved over the year in the Citroen. He's going pretty well, but lost, I reckon, a second or two on that being too wide. Got to remember, too, that in recent years, he's largely been a tarmac competitor. It's fantastic to have him back on dirt, but it's wild to hear him say, first crack at Rally Victoria, so he exits the Petters loop here and will start to work oh. towards now the Polaris pinch. Wow, he's got his hands full at the moment. Doesn't look as tidy as Evans. Evans did a brilliant job and has really laid down a benchmark as we take a look at the split time. No, he hasn't done it. And the dust is getting worse and worse as he comes down now. This long straight before the tight left-hand hairpin. Resting that speed under brakes. 100. Barkley looks so cool under pressure, doesn't she? Just watching the road up ahead, making sure that she's in the right place on the notes. He did that corner pretty well. Comes up, goes wide, as all the other cars have done so. Come through the Pan Am split there. A wide entry, late left five. Don't cut, don't go wide. 150. He's a bit wider than the other two cars. He's sawing the wheel, wasn't he? But it's 125 k's an hour at the high tech oil's radar trap there. Fastest top. Oh, oh big and jump! Big air! Big, big air! Jump. Wide entry, turn late right three, don't cut. Up to this right hander, out wide. This has kind of been a stage in two parts for this combo, hasn't it? He kind of was a little bit erratic just dialing himself in in the first part, but a strong finish here. A strong finish from this pairing, but they lost the time to begin with, and that's the net result. Bottom right of your screen, it's a hell of a mark laid down by Eli Evans and Glenn Weston. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I've never been around there before, so yep, the first one was my first run and the second one was my second run, so there's a bit more in it, but I, I you know, Long rally, you know the usual story, so we're happy just to be here. Some analysis on mm. the Kumo replay, and this Ooh. was critical, wasn't it? It certainly was. Late on the brakes, he sort of didn't read that road too well. And down there at the Coates uh, hairpin, lost a bit of time trying to get back onto the road. And a Love bit of this, though. Big, big <laughs> jump, mate. Yeah, it's terrific stuff. All right, so no change to the power stage leader, Eli Evans and Glenn Weston standing firm, but Steve McKenzie is not on the start line. So we've made it to the service park to Steve McKenzie and uh, young Steve, mate, awesome job in qualifying and you're not out there now for the run. No, no, really disappointing this morning. We had a real good run in qualifying um, over the jump there. We've obviously bent the strut though. I thought it took it quite well, um, but apparently it hasn't. So we're in here putting another set back in uh, and then we'll be back out there to Salvo, hopefully putting in more good times. And the thing was, it was a good time. You were in the mix there, and we've got the championship you know, guys fighting for the lead, only guys in front, and the former champion qualified fifth. So you're right in the mix with this very new car as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, it's a stage I think suits both me and the car, so um, I was expecting to put in a good time, I guess. But um, very disappointing not to be out there again in the power stage. Um, but I guess that's it. Um, we're not in it for the championship, so we'll be out there the Savo going for the rally, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Mate, well, like I said, it's not a big drama. You fixed it, so good luck for that. Cheers. Thanks, Dean. So disappointing for a good young team, Rusty, but they'll be back out there, no doubt. And I think the smile hides the disappointment, Dean, doesn't it, for the McKenzie brothers? Their qualifying time was two seconds faster than Eli Evans. It's Scott Petter, though, waiting on the line to see if he can knock the current Australian champion off his perch. Watching the East Coast Bull Bars ARC as teams do battle in the last Armour All Power Stage for the 2014 Championship. Gee, we've seen some excitement throughout the year with this addition to the series. Dean is with the team that clocked the most wins so far in 2014. So championship leaders Scott Petter and Dale Moskett, mate, it's last year's champ, your old foe you have to beat, a 204.5 he's done through there in the clean run. Yeah, it's, every time I turn up there's an Evans to beat. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> You know, we just have, a, have to have a nice smooth run through here. These stages uh, reward nice smoothness. And, uh, you know, the first run was quite good apart from the dust. So 
you know, it's a matter of repeating that, not doing it stupid, because obviously we've still got a, a reasonable point lead. Now you say that, obviously Evans was the guy that knocked you off in these stages last year. This year you've got three to Brendo's two. Now he's out qualified you. Championship wise, what are you thinking sitting here right now? What are you going for? Yeah, look, no doubt it'd be handy to, to knock Brendo off here and, and bag some more points. That, that makes the calculations a little bit nicer, but you know, at the end of the day, I, I think uh, you know this, this doesn't matter a huge amount for the overall, just a matter of getting through, nice run, and uh, see where we're at. Good luck, mate. Thank you. So there we go, guys. The first time I've had Scott Penner talking about the championship. He's normally all about the outright pace of this stage, so he's thinking big picture now. Interesting observation, Dean. I reckon there's a little switch down low somewhere that Dale Moskett hits that transforms him from cool Petter to competitive Petter, and he is away. And uh, he can smell the Australian Rally Championship. Look at the eyes. Hey, he's, uh, he's on fire as he goes down into the first right-hander. Out. Two right plus. Lovely line. Let's see if he clips the corner here and the late breaks. It's pushing a bit, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, no, good, good, good as he goes through there. Through the Petters loop now. Stretching the legs of the Renault. Chasing it, look at him hustling, chasing it. Now what about the dust when he comes back? The dust will be bad. Up to the Polaris split time as he comes through. Let's see how he goes. This is going to be good. Oh, look at that. Yes, how about that? He's, He's on fire. Up. Evans and Weston are under serious threat here. From Scott Petter and Dale Moskett, we head now toward the Coates higher hairpin. He needs this to be tidy. This is the important bit. Grabs the handbrake there, just uh, pulls it round. Oh, lovely. I would say he'd be another second or so up on, on his run at the moment. Nine right. The engine is actually screaming now. We're into the fast part of the track, and let's see how he goes through here and what sort of speed he'll hit Built at the high advantage. tech. Look at oh. it sideways. Oh, no! Big one! Oh. Oh. No, stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop, 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 stop. Please stop. All right? Calming influence. Good work, Dale Moskett. Let's take a look at this on the replay. What went wrong? It was looking so fast at this point. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Amazing that he didn't go over. He's dropped that right-hand wheel down into that gutter, and that's thrown him off cue and pirouetted. Yeah, he's had drama. Is that a drama out there? That's, that's our time now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's had problems. Just uh, came from a little bit further out wide than, than I should have probably, and uh, it uh, kicked the back of the car out and in into the gutter, and then we, it obviously brought us back around, and we pivoted pivoted in the air. So quite lucky not to roll actually. Yeah, so uh, a bit of a wake up. Hopefully the boys can fix it. It looks 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 worse than what it probably is. I think. Oh, you got to yeah. feel for him. Yeah. He's livid with himself, I think, more than anything else. But thankful. The damage isn't too bad. Let's go back to Dean. Brennan Reeves, different for us. You're outside the car. We've just had Scott Petter, who's pirouetted, hasn't rolled, but they're OK. Uh, good news for them. Difficult for you, though. You've still got to run this stage. And, of course, points and championship, everything going through your head right now. Yeah, for sure. The points are what we're here for, but glad to hear they're OK. These power stages are tricky. I've come unstuck on a couple of them myself this year. Um, but you can see the road here. There's two trenches, so I'll try and stay within them and get the grip. Car sat here now for a lot longer than the other competitors, so I'll have some really cold brakes and a cold engine. But we had a good qualifying run with a lot of dust. We're looking for a clean run now with no dust. Ironically, Reeves had wanted Eli Evans to set a good pace to help separate himself from Scott Petter. Right now, though, Evans and Weston stand between Reeves and five championship points. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> well, we've got three championship points, so whether it's five or not, I'm not sure. So. Brendan needs the five, so I'd say he's going to go for it. So obviously with Scott Peters' car clear, we're now going down to our final runner in the stage. We chatted before, Brendo. Now how are the nerves sitting in there with the helmet on ready to go? Yeah, I'm glad this is not the end of the rally and we're <laughs> sweating it out, but um, good. Look, clean run. Uh, we had some gearbox issues during the week in testing. Uh, so that was my first run in the car and the Hollinger felt really nice. Um, so we'll just be trying to be yeah, smooth and fast and have a smart drive. Um, it's all about being clean on this line because it's like a granite sand base which is extremely slippery and yeah we'll try and not hit too many of those hay bales down there and have a good run. Are you thinking about Eli's time or not? 
Not too much about Eli, just thinking about where Scott's crashed, uh, making sure my note's right in that position. I know um, that's a really tricky spot. It, it narrows, I think it's a six left, and there is a hole on the outside and a big fence, and I think that's probably what he's hit, probably that hole. So I'll try and keep it clean in there, and, and then it'll be all my own race. Have a good run, mate. Thanks, mate. I guess that's the irony, isn't it, that it's it's the reminder now. Unfortunately, what has happened to Pedder will be a reminder for this guy. He can't afford to have a similar thing happen here, Ross. Exactly, Rusty, and he's got it in his notes, you see. He sort of said there's a hole there, so he would have uh, written in there. Uh, maybe Scott didn't pick it up when he went through. But anyway, sad for Scott, but this guy is going to be trying. Got to, got to admire Petter's tenacity for chasing. And as you say, this guy will be giving it his all. He can sense an opportunity in championship terms here now. Remember, he's chasing Scott Petter for the title. These points could be valuable in the final analysis. Nice wide approach to that corner and kept on the bitumen. Uh, you know, got an extra, extra second or so off the rest of the competitors with that. Five left Titans. It's a great little car. It just sounds fantastic, and they've done a great job the whole year in this car. And, of course, uh, Brendan's been overseas and competed and has been doing very, very well. Up through the uh, first big time, he's down. I tell you what. Not by much. No. Not by much relative to Evans and Weston, but it was very tidy through the pinch. We head down now to the Coates Higher hairpin. This is where it all counts. He's a bit wide, but carried a reasonable amount of speed. The next split time will tell the story. Eight minus break. Down. But that said, you, you can just tell it's, a, it's yep. enough. The, it's, he's mindful here, I reckon, of what's going on, unfortunately, for Scott Petter. And Rhiannon's voice does not change, no matter how serious the moment. 126 k's an hour at the high tech. Radar, that's very impressive and a good, good jump. jump as well. Good jump. 120, turn square right, portion. Cuts the corner. Oh, washes a lot of speed. Bit of understeer there. Comes up to the final two corners. It's close. I, I don't know that it's going to be enough to take it, but you know what? This is the kind of drive he needs if he's to try and win this championship. That's really oh, smart stuff, but he does it. About that? Final sector gets there. It didn't look it through the first two splits. What a recovery from Rhiannon Gelsomino and from Brendan Reeves. That's a critical Armour All Power Stage win for their 2014 championship. Fantastic stuff. Five big points for him too. He'll be happy with that. Uh, have me sweating in there and puffing like... There's a lot of pressure. I, I don't need that this early in the morning. <laughs> That's one box tick. Now we have two more to go. So the Maz has done a great job. Look, the team was working till really late last night. We had this gearbox still out of the car. We had a lot of problems in testing. Uh, Hollander and Rally School, thanks to them. Such a beautiful car today, considering we basically did no testing at all. This power stage has had it all as we take a look at the Kumo replay. This is what I was saying, Ross. It was just lovely. Perfect line, wasn't it? Through certainly, the pinch. certainly was. And Rusty, you know, he made that time up in the last two corners. He was braking later than the, the cars in front, of course, and has done the business. Great speed in that final sector. So Brendan Reeves and Rihanna Gelsomino level the score in the Armour All Power Stages for 2014. It was a good run. I was looking for where Scotty had gone into the bank there. Um, but we didn't worry about it. We hit the jump absolutely flat and we had photographers running. It was a lot of fun and the car performed awesome. We've decided that we're taking each part at a time. So power stage we've won, now we've got heat one to look at, then heat two. So, you know, we've got 22 more points to catch up now. So we've just got to break it down and do the best we can and, and go flat out and see what happens. Yeah. Smart play for the weekend. And what happens, of course, now is the Armour All Power Stage Dance. Power Stage Dance! <laughs> <laughs> That's it for the final Armour All Power stage for this season. Three apiece for Pedder and Reeves, with the championship deciders still to run. Coming up next, the final round of the East Coast Bull Bars four-wheel drive national series. Can the Irishman Richie Dalton fend off Henry Knott and Gerald Schofield? You'll find out in just a few moments. Back to Rally Victoria and the final round of the East Coast Bull Bars Four Wheel Drive National Series. The tussle at the top was between Richie Dalton and Henry Knott. New South Wales versus South Australia. 
It should have been a three-way battle with Queenslander Jay Davidson, but a crash in testing had him borderbound before competition even began. Gerald Schofield was also a mathematical chance at the title, but the real battle should have come down to Dalton and not. It wasn't to be. Just five k's into the first stage, a circlip broke on the main input shaft in the transfer box, sidelining Knott and co-driver Tanya Wearing. After a stellar performance in only his first ever rally last round, JJ Hatton showed his rookie status was not to be ignored. Because now I've finished cops, I can push a bit harder. And if I come over this one, I come over this one. But uh, I guess I'm slowly starting to figure out pace knots. I know what the pace knots are, but I'm slowly starting to trust them. It was his countryman, Richie Dalton, though, who was showing everyone a clean pair of heels. But before he knew of Henry Knott's dramas, he'd scared his experienced co-driver, John Allen. Five right plus, four left. Four left coming up here. Four left. Four left. Four left. Five right plus, 50. Still a 21-second lead over 18 kilometres showed he was determined to win. Mark Petter was second quickest in the S2000 VW Golf imported four-wheel drive looked and sounded the part. Pedder, a new co-driver, John McCarthy, coming to terms with a very different kind of car. It is a little bit different, yeah, four-wheel drive. Um, yeah, so it's, it's quite a lot of fun to drive. It just, at the moment, lacks a bit of power. Uh, still needs a little bit of development. So, but yeah, no, a huge amount of fun to drive. And yeah, apparently it sounds pretty good out in the forest. And it went pretty well as well. Header and McCarthy third in heat one ahead of the car's owner, Justin Dowell. After an absence from ARC competition in recent times, Dowell and regular co-driver Matt Lee returned in an Evo 10, but with a continuation of the issue's last rally when a sticking accelerator led to a crash. Okay. It's pushing us into corners and therefore, you know, that basically the brakes have to fight against the engine, so we just can't stop it. SS2 guns was uphill, so Dowell did take top spot across the 13km stage by just one second. Another of the old ARC guard returned this round, Darren Windus campaigning an early model Subaru with international co-driver Alex Gelsomino pointing the way. The pair recorded times in the top three each stage in heat one, handing them a second for the heat. Dalton's huge early lead was never reeled in, and he and John Allen finished with a 22-second advantage. The best Gerald Schofield could manage was fifth for the day, extending the odds on the Fibertech medical driver's chances at taking out the ECB National four-wheel drive series. He too, and the temptation of winning the rally versus winning the series was front and centre for Richie Dalton. But so too was the issue of tyres. Tyres are a big problem, so we're going to swoop, I'm going to have to pull it back big time because I, I went through eight tyres yesterday, so in four stages, and now I've only eight tyres today to do in nine stages. So it was a popular theme, but Henry Knott, who'd rejoined for Heat Two, had plenty of kumos. That wasn't his issue. Uh, we don't have a LSD in the front, so we had to change our, drop, our transfer case. And yeah, so we're lacking in that respect, so it's got to be uh, 10 tenths from here on. It was 10 tenths all right, but Darren Windus had the upper hand, leading not home by 1.9 seconds in the opening stage. 50, six right in, into short, seven left. Justin Dow was right in the mix as well, and now with five. a different engine tune to overcome the conflict between stop and go pedals. Next stage was Henry Knott by 12 over Richie Dalton, but this time, no Windus. I uh, started the first stage, beautiful 24K, and um, did a set a very good time, fastest in four wheel drive, but uh, two Ks from the end, uh, uh, unfortunately, the power steering went. Our rally rookie JJ Hatton continued to punch above his weight, beating the times of many more experienced drivers. But the temptation to chase his hard-charging countryman, Richie Dalton, was too much, and he paid the price, running wide through SS8 to Raga Reverse. Fortunately, nothing more than damaged Irish pride. 
Ironically, Hatton had specifically not fitted his new roof vent to the car for this round because he had a feeling. With Henry not leading the heat, Dalton became the third winner in as many stages. But Justin Dowell had found form with the new tune and took the next four stage wins to cement himself as heat leader. Mark Petter stayed close to the fastest four in four wheel drive until SS9 when a spark plug failed and he dropped out of contention. At the start of the event, Brett King had suggested everyone sign the bonnet of his car. But by the end of the event, the Subaru RX resembled a mobile graffiti billboard. It was due for a repaint anyway, so why not? Like everyone in the field, Franco Liucci was doing everything he could to conserve the Kumos. The moment it gets a bit loose, we need to back off and just, uh, yeah, conserve and make sure we bring it home, so. He and Niall Gavin took third equal for the rally with Mark Pedder. Improved performance in Heat 2 rewarded Justin Dowell and Matt Lee with second for the weekend. But when the chips were down, it was the Irishman from New South Wales, a Heat first and third, enough to win the rally, and with that, the East Coast Bull Bars four-wheel drive national series. Gerald Schofield held on for third ahead of Jay Davidson, who never got the chance to make it a three-way battle. Fellow Queenslander Michael Bailey rounded out the fastest five for 2014. Coming up next, Grant Walker brings in reinforcements from across the ditch in an effort to beat the bait Salika. Will the combination of that and the Jeff David Porsche 911 apply sufficient pressure to Team Toyota? We'll find out in just a moment. Welcome back. It takes an enormous effort to run the Australian Rally Championship, including critical support from our major supporting partner. They proudly lay claim to making the world's best alloy bull bars. But what does that all mean? We've come here to East Coast Bull Bars to find out. G'day, Paul. G'day, Craig. Good normally, to see you. Normally we see one another on the uh, stages of the Australian Rally Championship. We do indeed, yeah. We're nice to come into your backyard here today. Thank you. Big statement. It is indeed. What goes into making a bull bar? Well, it's a formula that we've perfected over the last 40 years, and for us it really comes down to quality and strength. Why don't you come in and we'll show you how we make them. Love to have a look. The start of the process for us really begins in R&D. We utilise computer technology as well as being in front of the vehicle, handcrafting the product. The next step of the process is to begin the creation of the parts. The 6mm thick high tensile alloy plate is generally twice as thick as any other bull bar on the market. We then move to the section where we're folding that into what we call a channel. We can then begin wrapping the channel. At around 350 degrees, the plate softens to a point where the material forms into a quite a nice rolled radius edge. But at the same time as the channel is being folded, the tube is being precision bent using our mandrel bender. The mandrel bending process ensures that the wall thickness through the bend is maintained. This is important to us because the tube not only looks good, but also maintains its even wall thickness, which is really important for strength. By this point, the channel and the tube come together ready for welding. We go to the extent of using a pure welding wire, which enables maximum strength. Once the product has been welded, it can go one of two ways. To the polishing section to get its mirror polish finish. The alternative option is one of our premium and durable powder coat finishes. The bull bar is now ready to go into its box to move to the warehouse where it will finally be loaded onto the truck and on its way to the customer. A lot more goes into the making of a bull bar than I ever realised. Built with a blend of craftsmanship and cutting edge technology, the end result is a quality Australian made product that is a little bit like the Sydney Harbour Bridge, engineered to last a lifetime. And it probably seems a lifetime since we saw cars like these at the top of the main Australian Rally Championship. 40 years on, the classics are still entertaining as they did in their heyday. First car on the road, Neil Bates discovered just what this weekend would bring. Slippery. That's what you get for being the first car on the road. I got to the end of the first stage and I said I was like chasing a cake of soap around the bathtub. It was just so amazingly slippery. Jeff David and Grant Geelan gained little benefit from the swept roads. 
but after their last round misdemeanor, the 911 was staying shiny side up, third in stage. Clay Badenoch started well in the sister Salika, but the competition was hot and the best he could manage was fourth. Grant Walker was making a statement about being local. He occupied second early on. Next stage though, the Baden Motorsport entry was sidelined with terminal engine issues. By the start of the second heat, Walker's imported co-driver Dave Neal was acutely aware of just how different rallying is in Australia and in this car. A bit scary in parts because uh, as you've seen and you know yourself, if you get a bit wide, you're uh, a lot of timber on the outside and uh, you don't want to do that. So different feel in the car completely to the RX-7 where the uh, Escort quite sideways where the RX-7 back home with Marcus is very direct and, uh, and you know pulls out of the corners quite tight where these little babies get a little bit looser and, and uh, takes a little bit more to get the momentum going. If the momentum wasn't the same in the Volvo camp, the smiles were just as wide. The tortoise was catching the hares and Ross Kingham was returning to roads made famous by another legendary rally. We did our point last year so we know the roads are great here so we just thought we'll just give it one more run and uh, see how we go and expecting nothing other than to enjoy it and drive the car on the trailer at the end and so we're still going so fingers crossed. Yeah. No smiles though in the second Celica, trailer bound before stage end with a broken radiator mount. Strike two for Toyota, but a chance for the Porsche. We just saw Coral at the spectator point holding the OK board, so we assume it's mechanical. He wasn't just stopping to watch the cars go through? Well, he might have, you know, and then he's going to catch us all up later. <laughs> David and Geelan raced off to a well-deserved victory in the 911, with the Anzacs, Walker and Neil forging a credible second place. The dominance of Bates and Taylor throughout the year, though, meant no one could wrest the classic rally challenge from the most formidable driver-co-driver combination in the history of the sport. That wraps up the first part of our coverage from Rally Victoria. Watch out for all the action from the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship in our final program of the year, coming up same time next week. Just check your local guides for details, and as always, Keep up to date with the latest info at rally.com.au. For the team, I'm Greg Rust. Bye for now. Break for 50, turn right three, narrow. Today's coverage is made possible by Kumo Tire, Pedder Suspension, Armour All, Co Tire, Pan Am, Glass, High Tech Oils, and our supporting partner, East Coast Bull Bars, world's best alloy bull bars. Woohoo!